you know, you mentioned the marriage word yeah. a yeah. moment ago, and with a phrase like forever only exists for those who don't try to force it. I wonder what is a commitment there for to you? But what I also said there, marriage? forever, forever uh, is, is only true for those who believe it. Yeah. So, so people who believe in marriage and really want that and, and believe that is part of their life force, then it exists. <laughs> And for the, for the people out there who are against marriage, say, come on, I think marriage is a, is a ridiculous institution and it's an old uh, ways of thinking and we should be much more liberated than that. How can you say that? Or the other way. Marriage is the only way of a man and a woman and blah, 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 blah. And I talk in this, in this about open relationships, which is all over the... That's yeah. the, the, the blogosphere is all about open relationships. It's the new... It's a new way to be, right? I don't know. So seems, Is that more enlightened? I don't know. It seems like you're saying, I guess it comes back to authenticity and mindfulness again. If people believe in marriage, yeah. fully believe in marriage, um, then it's, it's likely to, to work. If people are getting married because that's what society says they should do after a certain amount of time, or because they want the wedding, or because yeah. they that stuff, where it's not mindfully chosen, it's also something they ought to do rather than something they want to do, then that's artificial and authentic, and maybe yeah, that's why exactly. marriage is failing these days more. If they're stepping forward in marriage as being something that is part of how I, of the beauty of life, and I feel like that is, um, then that's a great thing. Then they're stepping forth in something that, that is a, a, a beautiful commitment that they've chosen as opposed to while well, society wants you to get married so let's just do it yeah right yeah. it's the art it's the forcing that i'm railing against here and and the demand that others follow our model it's a, it's it's a complete demand of the, the marriage advocate saying if you don't want marriage you have a fear of commitment and that's the proper way of a man and woman and then the open relationship crowd says Oh, come on, that's old ways of thinking. And that's a wrong, constricted way of being, right? Because of biology. And because so of biology yeah. and, yeah, yeah, there's no monogamy in nature and all that kind of stuff. And that's opinions. I have no stance on it. Could you marry? What? Could you marry? Yes, I could. Yeah. For whatever, for whatever reasons of... For whatever reasons... It made sense to you. It made sense to me. I'll always, I'll always be as true as I can to myself and my choice and what I want. Not what she wants. Not what she wants. What I want. And what I want might be what she wants. Very likely, it's going to make. I want. I want her to be happy in life. Right. But I always stay congruent to examining myself every day and saying, "What? Who am I? And what do I want? What's the best expression of?" me on this earth <clears throat> and how can we be true to that potentials are everywhere but possibilities are, are everything I could also become a mountain climber <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you never know you said something earlier on about this relationship being its own entity a third entity that the relationship is not the man nor the woman not or not the merged together it's something else um with its own, it needs its own space, its own agenda, its own boundaries, its own room to breathe. Yeah. Can you say a little bit more about that? Because it seems new, abstract. It is abstract. And there's no concrete thing in that for me to be able to really describe, but it just seems that there's, it's its own living, breathing entity. And it needs its own, and it, because then you're not, you're not, absconding the identity of each other and blending it all into one big mush pile. There's still an identity. There's still a, a, a dreams and, and excitement and, and of separate but joined paths. I don't know how else to say it. Right. To completely like give up everything that we thought was our passions or her and blend it all together so we have this, okay, we, we do this 
which ends up being just like, we'll watch TV every night because we can't do, <laughs> we don't have our own desires, I think. What I wonder, because, you know, I believe that most concepts out of your book come because of a series of um, trial and practice and yes. head scratching frustration and then something new. I imagine that the worldview of a relationship being a third entity works better than the worldview of, yeah, not that. As, as everything else in this chapter, it's a, maybe it's this, maybe it's that, without absolutes, you know? So when you imagine your relationship, that you imagine a third entity, yes. like a bubble above both of your heads yeah. with its own. Which is a kind of a cool thing to watch. Look at that, look what we're co-creating. That's a great thing. So this is what I want to know, because yeah. there's some way that you have of <laughs> seeing it yeah. that could be very useful for others out there. Yeah. Sure. Hmm. I'm, in, I'm amazed by relationship. I'm, I'm, I'm in awe of it, thinking, wow, look at that beautiful, sacred thing created out of nothing, I think. Yeah, it is its own thing that I, that I can admire, the relationship itself. I admire her, and I admire the relationship that we created out of, huh? out of nothing, us two random souls. Does it, when you think about it and you admire it, does it have its own like shape and form and color and vibration? <laughs> I don't think so. I want to get a sense of how you do it, like as, just as a thought experiment in my own life, because maybe it shifts something. Yeah. I just think that it has its own, its own expansion and contraction and growth and rhythm, and it's a, it's something that it's a it's a joy to watch it. Just like you know, imagine if you if you think of a career, right? That isn't you. But it is something that's very much a lot, uh, like uh, it's it's its own sphere. Your career is its, it has its own trajectory. If you're lucky, some people are their careers, and that's a whole other well, this is battle true. to live. This but yeah, but I look at things differently. I step aside and say, okay, here's me, and then this career trajectory that I follow. That's I'm watching that too in 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 introspection. I'm saying, wow, I was there, or I was there, and then my career went. We talk about our career as a third party entity. You and your career. Yeah, I don't. No? Well, in general. I'm, yeah. I generalize Yeah, it. no, it's fine. Right? So I had a career as a financial advisor and had a career then as a, as a, and, and we, we can see that trajectory, how we started, where it went, and it has its own, its own thing, I think. But maybe that's just my weird way of looking at well, the Well, I, I just want to say, I, I, I talk about my career in the sense of I am a brain right operator. Yeah. But if you had a career previous to that for 10 years, you, you were a line cook, you wouldn't say, I am a line cook. Right. I would say, a, I am now. But you can certainly see that there was a career of 10 years as a line cook that, had, that was its own concept, was it not? Its own bubble. I don't know. Maybe. This is where it gets to the point where, where we're doing this psychological unconscious model of a successful person and how do they view this and... Ah. Like, I think there's something very, if you can abstract yourself from your career or your relationship and look at it from a distance, it means you have like this emotional distance perhaps, or this way to visualize the past and the future. And that's a massive resource compared to the person who is their career or is their relationship and is tied to and okay. informed by it all the time. It's like, you've got the gift to go to the top of the mountain Look, look at different areas of your life as if they're separate things that you actually have some power over to influence rather than being submerged in relationship or in career all the time without any power to shift. Without it. any personal identity outside of career or relationship. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I'm trying to say is like the personal identity is still you on your spiritual journey. And the career is an outpouring of that. Relationship yeah. is an outpouring of that. But you are still on your own, devoted to your own path, your own personal journey. That isn't like, I, I need that career or I need that, that relationship to be, to, to give me meaning. And maybe, maybe you do, I don't know. Big questions, I don't know. 
So were you ever the vice president of such and such company or did you yeah, do the job of vice president? Yeah. I had a very strong position in a, in a strong company. And uh, I'm not... Actually, I'm just asking oh. if you fully took on the identity of being vice president yeah. or did you just do the role of vice president yeah, for a number of years? Yeah, yeah. my real identity, what I identified with when I had all the... When I sat in the boardroom every day and I had this responsibilities and people working with me and for me and around me um, um, in the corporate side of things, my real identity was that kid sneaking through the forest. That's the real guy. And I was out on the weekend. I would sit with my girlfriend and drink some champagne on the balcony, not thinking about the corporation at all. For me, it didn't become my identity. I still, my identity was with sitting here and looking out over the, over the, over the city and the balcony here. That's, kind of, that's, what I, that's what I identified with. That was the real me. So the real you is the you that pauses and- Yeah, and I did the corporate thing. I went golfing, golf tournaments and that. That wasn't the real me. That was me going, I, I got to do, go through the, go through the, I got to go do the, all the things. If I was independently wealthy, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done all these things. Yeah. I would have sat on the balcony with my girl. <laughs> right. That's what I would have done. Which is the real me. You know, a few days ago I said how, um, actually it seems that the, the Zan of the chapter with the, forests of the north and running around with no shoes like that sense of <laughs> gratitude and innocence still permeates who you are today yeah it's making sense to me right now like it's not like you got eaten up by the normal ways of defining ourselves that we do in society it's like you you entered into the the the, the structured world late yes and it's like you're still sneaking around it but you've got your own sense of freedom and self yeah. When so many people lose ourselves to be in this role in this division of the company and the husband of this woman. Yeah, I never had that. I never identified myself with that career. I did the career and I was good at it and and I enjoyed it. But I never said that's I, yeah, I would never say that that's what I am. I'm a Commodity, commodities and analyst. It, I just wonder if this is useful or interesting, interesting to you guys because I'm like, you would never say you are that. No, I never, never, had, had, never had, had that thought. You know, you know why I say I am that because I enjoy my job. Yeah, I love that I do my job. That's a pride in your but job. But then there's pride in that. that. There's yeah. pride in like saying, you know what? Hey, I'm a I'm a lion trainer. I I like that. Yeah, I'm proud to say it to the world that that's what I am. But if you left that job. You wouldn't be like crawling to I'm a ball. I'm not upset about it. I'm traveling, yeah. I'm traveling for four years. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whereas mm. some people, they, they lost their job or they lost their current relationship, were just, that was their life. And they were just kind of break them. Which is kind of the unhealthy, that's I think yeah, you're talking about. That's why, you know, when you're forced to retire mm. after years and you have no other identity, you have no home yeah. hobby. What are you going to do now? You get sick and you die. That happens a lot. They, go about they don't want to retire, they want to keep going. So they go out building the boat. Yeah. That analogy. So yeah, we're talking about careers now. <laughs> yeah. Well, it seems going back to relationship and this third entity, it seems as if you've got the capacity to step out of the relationship, go for a wander and look at it and see what it is and see how it's unfolding and see what yeah, it I'm, might need. I'm in awe of it and think that's what a, what a brilliant thing. And I really watch it. But I also don't say, okay, how do I feed and water this thing now? I don't think, okay, what needs that? I better do this more. I don't feel that. So what I'm curious about is um, you say you don't want to, you don't talk about, you don't question where the relationship is going. But yeah. when you look at your relationship as, it's a, as if it was a third entity, yeah. do you check in with her Always. and see if she's looking at the relationship as Always. a third entity? So you've got a shared understanding of what that third entity actually is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We talk about it all the time. Isn't that something? We go for walks and we talk about it all the time. But there's no question in it, I guess. What does it mean? We don't ask what it means. We just like, we like that it is. So you're both, you're both talking about the relationship all the time. You're on the same page about what that entity is and feels like and looks like and what it's doing. 
but there's never any planning for the future in that. Didn't say that. There's uh, no, there's no, there's no, um, where is it? There's no forcing for the future. Big difference. You can plan all you want for the future. Say, hey, you know, like in three years from now, let's go to Tahiti. Let's do that. Do you want to do that, baby? Okay, let's plan it. Nothing wrong with that. But there's no artificial, let's make sure this thing keeps going forever and ever and ever. Does that make a distinction? Yeah. It's like the butterfly, that the forcing is like, you're putting yeah. your hand, almost like the butterfly's a relationship as well as the girl. You yeah, and you that. promised me this, and I thought that, that kind of feeling. Right? Yeah. None so, of that's there. So you're looking at the, the, the relationship bubble and thinking, maybe this is love. <laughs> maybe it all is, yeah. So it's like, you're setting plans and talking about, oh, this summer we're going to go to Canada and we're going to do this and this and this and this and this. <clears throat> and yet if for some last minute reason she can't go because work or her own adventure pops up, then you'll be sad. But it's not like there's the, hey, you know, we agreed. And no, 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 no. And maybe I changed my plans because of it. Right? Well, I'm not going to go with that. If you can't go, I'm not going to go to Tahiti if you can't go, baby. It's not like nothing set in stone like that. There's a fluidity about it. No attachment to outcome. Yeah. Yeah, but, the, but great desire. Mm. I want a happy future. I want to like wander the earth and that's my girl. You know, I want that. Like, that's a great strong thing. Doesn't mean like, oh, no, 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 it can't be beholden to any kind of future because that's a bad thing. It's a different thing we're saying here. Yeah. You get that, right? Yeah. yeah. There's the forcing and the, and the promise promise I will promise you this and this and this you don't know that do you think of your other relationships as third entities as well like you could think of your relationship with that girl from the past or the, the business partner or the early ones no no that was very much like a and a needy scrabbling type of how do we make this work and what do I do and, 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 and is it going sideways and whew, I'm going to think about this and what, what's my next steps and how do I fix this? Right? <laughs> this is making... Like, I'm thinking about the weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, it's making sense to me as well in the context of the shoulder to shoulder. The relationship is not like me yeah. and you serious. Looking, yeah, perfect. Exactly. Boom, boom, it's all here. It's more like the... There's me and you and we're side by side and this thing. Is the relationship. Yeah. It's ahead of you. You see that? You see that? That's a great we're, shared vision. We're not imagining it that it's only here. It's, right. Yes. Exactly. That's where it's I was saying the break, I can't remember the name, the guy that wrote The Prince said exactly that. It says, most people think of love as this inwardly facing each other intense thing. But he sees it as looking in the same direction. I the same completely experiences. buy that. Yeah. That's that makes sense to me. And you do that with everything. Even when we're talking on the, on the practical stuff of how you go up and talk to a girl, it's always side by side. Yeah. And so a lot of these themes, even when we're talking about desire rather than outcome, we are yeah. going all the way through to relationships. They're all kind of constant themes across everything. Yeah, is it very much a, an alignment and going in this direction together? Yeah. For, for as long as it lasts, it could be last till you die. It could be the greatest thing, that going this direction. But it's never this inward staring at each other and there's nothing outside of that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, you guys get it. Yeah. It's a hard thing to describe. I've been trying to say it, talk about it and describe it for years, especially in a chapter about love and relationships, which is all a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you feel like you're talking about it in a new way with us right now? Um, I thought about these things for a long time, <laughs> a lot of years. So for me, my struggle is not necessarily that I'm trying to, well, it is I'm trying to understand it. I still don't quite understand it. But for me, the, the big, big struggle is trying to put words on anything that, to put the questions into good words, to come up with a good question. We sat before this film even started. What is the question here? What's a meaningful question that isn't like, well, relationships suck, and why do they break? <laughs> <laughs> right? So to put a really interesting new question out there is, is a fantastic thing. And, and I'm searching for, as you guys could tell, trying to explore this as well, because I don't, I don't understand it myself. I don't, but I like it. 
I'm just experimenting, I guess, with this idea of the third entity in, in my head yeah. and thinking about, well, if I met a girl this weekend and there's all this hope, if I'm like this with her, mm -hmm. it's like feels just in my body that it's important that we like, we get together yeah. and things work out because it's intense and it's between two of us. Like we need to talk. Everything mm. is a, yeah, yeah. a thing yeah. here. Yeah. But if I think of the girl I met at the weekend, it's like, well, what, what is the shape of our relationship right now? Oh, it's kind of like this and like that. And yes, if it crashes yeah, and burns, yeah. I can laugh at it kind of, oh, there it was. And then it went for a day and then she never called me back. And then that was it. It's not like I'm like needing that, that thing here yeah. to fill me here. It's like I'm watching this. Uh, I'm very much that way. Yeah. It's like my, my visual is that I'm seeing out here. I'm always, when I'm talking to a girl I just met or a girl I'm with, it's like we're, I'm always talking out here. Can you see that? This is, this is what's possible here. This horizon, you see that? If we just, if we keep stepping forward, we can, we can step into that. This, I don't know what it, it, it's like for sure out there as opposed to in here. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Everything about me, as you guys know, is the, is the looking out toward treasure. I'm a treasure hunter and the treasure hunter's over there. Let's go, who's coming? In my conversation with men is like, listen, there's a better way to, 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 to have conversations with women, to interact with women. Who's with me? Let's go. Let's go explore. Let's sit in this, with these TV cameras and explore. Cause there's a better, what is there? What possible treasure can we find as a group of men? That's how I feel. I feel like we're like, we're all in this together. We're all like, looking out towards that shared possibility of, of a distant horizon out there that is, there's, there's treasure out there, guys. And same with the relationship, same with the girl I meet in a bar. Can you not feel that? I can feel it. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about wow, what's possible there. And she's here, metaphorically, mm. but also physically. It's cool. It's uplifting. Yeah. To think about it makes me life. feel yeah. like I, I want to be part of that, you know? That's what I want to, that's how I, I want it to be. There's an ease and delight about it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, no heaviness. No, no this is heavy. No this construction. Fun. Yeah. No, we need to talk. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the next page, you say that a relationship can only last if the two of them view it with all the requisite wonder and curiosity and communion as a spiritual journey. Yeah. And by spiritual, you mean the spiritual in the broader sense of the word, soul searching, celebration, salsa lessons, a side by side, and here's my question, albeit individual quest for greater understanding. Yeah, same thing we've been saying this whole time. I just wonder about that word individual. Well, like I said, like my identity is not lost and her identity is not lost and the relationship's identity is not lost but bring it together in the trinity of, of the three, it's this great whole. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> but there's a personal journey. If, if I think a relationship can only last, here's my absolute, I'll say, because I say lots of absolutes. A relationship can only last if he's on a spiritual journey, whatever that means, and she's on a spiritual journey their own personal separate ones. They might be together in the same, same search of, of, of sharing ideas, but he's devoted to his own personal journey and she is too. He's trying to become more excellent and trying to understand his role in life, his, the meaning of his life, um, the relevance, uh, what is the relevance to him? What is, what is heart and meaning to him? Where's the music and, in, in his experience, and she is too. Because if one of them isn't, if one is saying, I'm a seeker and I want to understand things, and the other one says, I just want to go to work and, and come home and, and, and watch TV, yeah. and there's no curiosity in her experience or his experience, that's unequally yoked, as the Bible says. One ox is pulling more than the other at the yoke. It doesn't work. That makes sense. 
I am a bit snagged on the word individual because <laughs> at least, and maybe we're pointing maybe to the same said thing. Personal. And, and it's something about semantics here. Yeah, for sure. Because I should have said personal. Maybe, yeah. Because that's, I meant the same thing that you're thinking. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Individual. Because I know that if I'm alone, there's no change in my personal journey. But every, so for every love affair I have, I'm transformed yes. completely. Yeah. And I can't learn anything about this journey without this. Of course. Yeah, and that's what I mean too. Uh, it's the same, same thing, Jordan. It's like we're, on, we're devoted to our personal quest no matter what. And we're aligned with, with our loved one now. We're still devoted to our quest, but it just goes in alignment. It doesn't melt away because, oh, no, I want to follow her and her dreams, which is what a lot of guys do. Or a lot of, a lot of women do that too. They, they want to follow his dreams and they, have, they lose any kind of identity. That's when it gets to the point of, well, what about me? How can I never get any attention? Because you're so caught up in love, et cetera, right? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think there's an important distinction, which is um, it's not about... Like one, one option is to get lost in the personal journey of the other. So it's like, don't really make your own identity anymore. Right. You yeah. get lost in her work or mission and try and jump on that. There's another way, which is I can be so individual that I'm going to go about it all by myself and figure all this out and in I don't isolation. Yeah. 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 And then I think the, the more beautiful way is like, okay, I've got my personal journey. That's set. I'm not going to lose myself for somebody's job. I'm still on this quest but I want to do it in as much close contact to the, as other people as possible because that's the yeah. that's where it gets really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my way of feeling. Yeah, like, and there's a strong, there's not a neediness in it, but there's a great need to be inspired. Yeah. It, neediness I, is different than need. And your woman wants to feel that you need her. You need, you, she wants to have that element. Like, I don't need you, and I'm fine with you with without you. That's a, that's a bad energy too. That's yeah, the, sorry. sorry, that was what you said. You called it a enlightened neediness. individual enlightened, enlightened neediness. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, I think exactly the same thing as Stephen Curry. Stephen Covey is a very well business leader, relationship guy, called it like dependence, independence, and interdependence. Yeah. And it's oh. almost like the, the nice guys, the dependents, and they've got the bad boys, the independence, and now there's this greater level. Since we're a sure. set of threes in this group, there's this extreme, this extreme, and there's another. Yeah, and I, I, I suspect it. that, I mean, I haven't read relationship books or business books. Business, yeah. But I suspect I'm not the first one to say this kind of thing. Yeah. I'm certain that there's, this has been explored ad infinitum out there. And there's all kinds of conversation about a shared experience and what that means, etc. It's just my simple observation that I put down in the best language I know how. But this concept of enlightened neediness, which is the interdependence, <laughs> like yeah. not independent like of self <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and that's not come from me, that's come from a friend, right? I told you yeah. all the story of uh, met a girl with a friend on the same day yeah. and I lost Remember. out. Um, <laughs> and he was willing to say, I need you, which feels like the ultimate taboo, you know, like as. I guess like the life cycle of a man who wants to improve with women, first of all, he'll show up because that's what's needed, but show up looking cool. Then he'll start telling girls, celebrating women, yeah. telling them yeah. that he likes them. May even, and this is like a big one for the, the heart, admit, I love you. That's like a massive, has been a massive leap for me. I know for a lot of other guys. And then to say, I'm, I've fallen in love with you. I am in love with you. <laughs> and then it's like almost the last remaining plot of land in the empire of independence <laughs> as a man is, is <laughs> I'm going to cling on to it I'm going to cling on to it really hard is to say I need you to yeah, a woman yeah. in that enlightened way which is I need you and don't need you to be me but I need you to be at my absolute most glorious beautiful best as a man yeah I do I'm need best that with you. Mm. Yeah. I am best with you yeah that's fantastic hmm. I've heard it said this way by someone else who's fantastic on this it sounds really trite but it was the end like a big exploration he says essentially love is when you bring out the best in them and they, and they bring out the best in you which sounds a bit you know fortune cookie like <laughs> but that that is it surely yeah is that what we're trying to get to because sometimes it's all been said before it's always yeah. said before you know there's nothing new under the sun 
nothing I wrote in this book is new <clears throat> to humanity. But he was saying, I need you not because my life is awful without you. He's saying, I need you because you bring out the best in me and I bring out the best in you. That seemed like the energy he was talking about. Yeah, it's like, in you, I've experienced a kind of grace and femininity and beauty and fun that is uncommon. And I've been looking for this my entire life. Oh, that's a great thing. Yeah. yeah. And I've gotten this far and life has been good. I've had women in my life. I've had relationships. My life is going good. And this is the, the soul searching spiritual journey. It's like you're representing something that that, that I always longed for, yeah, but perfect. never had. I want to ride with that for as, as much as is needed or true. That's great. I'm reminded of the film, um, <clears throat> As Good As It Gets for Jack Nicholson. I didn't see it. That's great. And at one point, um, Helen, Helen Hunt is in it as well. And she's, he's out on a date with her in a restaurant and she's wearing a, a polka dot red dress. And in the film he has an obsessive compulsive disorder and he says a lot of things he, he shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> and he says to her, they let you in the house dress. And she says to him, pay me a compliment or I'm leaving. And he says to her, he, he, he hesitates and he's doing his OCD thing and fixing things on the table and he says, make me want to be a better man. <laughs> and she says, that's the best compliment I've had in my life. Yeah, that's, there you go. It's exactly what it is. How are we doing here? <laughs>